Alright guys, last section in chapter 12 we're going to cover has to do with oxidizing agent and reducing agent. Remember, once you identify one, once you identify the oxidizing agent, the reducing agent is the other compound with the arrow attached. Or, once you find out what the reducing agent is by that arrow, the other compound that has the arrow has to be the oxidizing agent. But there are some easy ways to get mixed up and easy ways to confuse yourself. So your job is to really understand this, and I'm a big metaphor guy, so try to think of oxidizing agent and reducing agent like a squirt gun and a dry sponge. The squirt gun, would you consider that to be the wetting agent or the drying agent? The thing that causes something else get wet. Isn't that what the wetting agent is? The drying agent causes something else to get dry. Right? Isn't that true? That the wetting agent causes something else to get wet. And the drying agent causes something else to get dry. Sure. So, is the squirt gun the wetting agent or the drying agent? Well, of course it's the wetting agent, right? It causes something else to get wet. And the dry sponge is the drying agent. Because it causes something else to get dry. But in the process of causing something else to get wet, what happens to the wetting agent? It loses its water and gets dry. So the wetting agent gets dry. The drying agent loses its dryness, right? because it soaks up the water. It gets wet. So, there's sort of an opposite thing going on here, right? The wetting agent gets dry, and the drying agent gets wet. Right? That's what happens with a wetting agent and a drying agent, with a squirt gun and a dry sponge. Well, we can think of an oxidizing agent and a reducing agent as the exact same thing. If a wetting agent causes something else to get wet, then the oxidizing agent causes something else to get oxidized. And a reducing agent causes something else to get reduced. Okay? Oxidize and oxidize. Reducing agent reduced. Okay. So, when you cause something else to get oxidized, that means you get the opposite of oxidized, which is reduced. When you cause something else to get reduced, you have the opposite happen to you. You get oxidized. Now, how does something get oxidized? If your paycheck got oxidized, would you be happy or sad? Well, we don't talk about getting our paychecks oxidized, but You'd know if you got your paycheck reduced exactly what that would mean. Okay? So, remember there's that opposite thing going on. Oxidizing agent gets reduced. Reducing agent gets oxidized. If the oxidizing agent gets reduced, how do things get reduced 
in these redox reactions. They gain electrons, right? They go down in oxidation number. That's what getting reduced means. Go down in oxidation number. So the oxidizing agent gains the electrons. That's the way you have to remember this. Oxidizing agent gains the electrons. Hey, where does the oxidizing agent get those electrons from? From the reducing agent. If a reducing agent makes something else get reduced, isn't the reducing agent the source of the electrons, which means it loses the electrons? That's the deal. The reducing agent loses its electrons. The oxidizing agent gains it. So, how do you go about doing your business here? You simply write oxidation numbers, draw arrows. You don't have to balance. You just have to tell me whether electrons are lost and gained, and then come up with this mnemonic. Oxidizing agent gets reduced, goes down an oxidation number, gains the electrons. If you can remember that, the redu or you, if you want to, you can say the reducing agent causes reduction, causes something else to go down an oxidation number, so it gives up its electrons. It's the source of electrons. Okay, so the examples are straightforward. Oxidation number is zero. Oxidation number is zero. This is an ionic compound heavy on the ion ic compound, right? So you know the chloride always makes a minus one. So the Fe, it doesn't even matter. At plus something. It's going to be a plus three, but who cares? Fe goes from zero to plus three. Chlorine goes from uh, zero to minus one. When you go from zero to plus three, did you gain or lose electrons? You got more positive which means you lost electrons. Oxidizing agent gains electrons. Going from zero to minus one, you gained electrons. So the Cl2, the whole molecule, is considered the oxidizing agent because it got reduced. Went down an oxidation number, gained the electrons. So the oxidizing agent is the Cl2 and the Fe is the reducing agent. Alright, let's try it again. Only with these two. No big deal. Au to Au plus 1, Ag plus 1, oops, to uh, Ag. Okay. 0, plus 1, plus 1, 0. Just keep it straight. The Au, which is gold, goes from 0 to plus 1. Lost electrons. So therefore, it's the fountain of electrons. It's the squirt gun that's squirting this guy. So therefore, this is the reducing agent. Why? Because it made that go down an oxidation number from plus 1 down to 0. It made it gain electrons. So the Ag plus 1 is the oxidizing agent. Okay? You don't really need to memorize both of these. One or the other will do. As long as you can identify the one, you know the other one with the arrow attached has to be the other agent. Okay. So, for a more complicated problem like this one, you have to get the oxidation numbers so that you know what things are losing or gaining electrons. Again, you don't have to balance. Just knowing the oxidation numbers tells you whether they're gaining or losing. Look, Fe by itself, so it's a zero. Fe plus three. You already know whether this is the oxidizing or reducing agent, right? Zero to plus three. Getting more positive. The only way you get more positive is if you lose electrons. Because if you gain electrons, you gain minus ones, you get more negative. You have to keep in track 
that when it's not about counting the electrons, it's about looking at the oxidation numbers. Okay? Zero to plus three, lose electrons. If you lose electrons, you are the source of the electrons. You're squirting your electrons out. Where are you squirting them to? Well, we'll have to look at the other arrow. No matter what, though, this is the reducing agent. So, the oxygen here is a minus two. The hydrogen here is a plus one. Plus one, minus two. So that's not part of the deal, is it? It's not part of the deal. Because minus two to minus two, plus one to plus one, it's not gaining or losing electrons at all. So it's not either the oxidizing agent or the reducing agent. It's like the spectator in the redox reaction. So oxygen is a minus two. That means the MN has to be a plus seven to get these to add up to minus one. So when we go from plus seven to plus two, are we getting more positive or more negative? More negative. So you gained electrons. Doesn't even matter how many. The oxidizing agent gets reduced, goes down in oxidation number, gains the electrons. Since this guy gained the electrons, the oxidizing agent is not just the MN, the MNO4 minus 1. You have to do the whole species, okay? And the reducing agent, there, you can see it, sorry about that, is Fe. Okay, so now I want you to be able to convince your roommate of what the right answers are and be able to explain it. I want you to be able to go back to every reaction that you've seen in Chapter 12, every single reaction, and see if you can identify which one's the oxidizing agent or which one's the reducing agent. By remembering, the oxidizing agent gets reduced. The reducing agent gets oxidized. When you get reduced, you go down an oxidation number, and that's done by gaining the electrons. Or the reducing agent causes reduction which means it squirts out the electrons so it had to lose them. Just remember one, keep that in mind, practice up so that you know that you can get these problems right. This is one of those ones that people never get and it ends up failing their course because they can't get this right. So you gotta practice it up, be good at it. It's not hard, just remember. Good luck.